Hi everybody, I'm back with the bottle line simulation for Logix Pro and we're going to look at exercise two, utilizing the Boolean data. Um, if you watched step uh, or exercise one, we drew this out like they have in the instructions and I talked a little bit about what this is doing and where you can find this data, where it's being shifted and how you can track what bottle is in what location. Um, for this, what we need to do is get these large bottle bottles to go down to this bottom conveyor it's kind of difficult to see everything and make your uh, logic big enough, but essentially we, we got to run this, con this uh, motor down here for this conveyor to run, and we have to open up this uh, trap door right here based off the solenoid so that only the large bottles come down here. So if we try to get fancy with it and get all the bottles all right side by side, um, and we don't get one out of the way in time, the bottle will come down and break. So we don't want that. So just for starters, we're going to run this conveyor all the time, so we know we're not going to have any bottle collisions there. Um, and then we need to make sure we get every single large bottle, whether it's broken or put together at this point, because that's what exercise we're on, and we don't get any short bottles. Um, and we're going to use the data in the bit shift registers here. Um, let me bring that up. And the last one, we kind of determined uh, and we might do some trial and error here. So the one that's detecting the large is input one slash seven. That's this one here in the middle, LS2, input one slash seven. So every time this bit shift is fired, it's going to B34, B34, the word B34, bit zero right here. So every time it records something, it's putting it in here. And then when it records the data for the next bottle, whether it's a large or not a large, it pushes the previous one over. So they keep rolling over to the left. Um, you'll see that I can run it here. So there's three big ones in a row that just came in and then two little ones and three big ones. There's the three big ones, two little ones, three big ones. Might be going a little fast for you, but anytime there's a one, that means that was a, a large bottle that was detected. Anytime there's a zero, it means that's a zero or a small bottle in that location. So all we have to do is figure out where, and you can slow this down with the scans up here, figure out which one of these bits represents the location right above where this solenoid is here. Is that what they're calling it? Diverter gate. Looks kind of like a solenoid to me. So you just need to figure out what position this is. And if I remember right, the last um, video I did, I figured out that it was right about here. But the other thing that you can do is stop it right after it moves one and try to figure out what bottle. So it's going to be in the middle of a group of three ones. And I was thinking it was this one and this one is in the middle of three ones. And if you go forward here, there's a, should be a zero and then a one. And here there's a zero and a one. Then behind it, there's four zeros and there's four short bottles behind it. So that makes sense that it would be this bit that we want to set up. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some rungs in here at the top. This isn't really the way I would normally do it, um, but just for ease of watching what I'm doing and understanding, I'm going to put these up top here. Makes it easier to follow along. I'm going to put an output. First output I'm going to put is for this motor. So I want this motor to basically run all the time. Um, and I'll label it. A large bottle motor because all the large bottles will be diverted down to this other conveyor. Um, for now I'm just going to leave it on all the time to make sure we don't have any crashes and there's nothing in the instructions that says that uh, it needs to be cycled on and off based on bottles coming down. So the uh, way to have the least amount of problems is just to let it run all the time. Um, same with the grinder when we get to that just let the grinder run all the time. <laughs> there's nothing in the directions as far as I've got so far that tells you that this grinder needs to cycle on and off all the time. Um, now we are going to um, actuate, we're going to make an output go true that's going to actuate this diverter valve and it's going to open up and make this bottle fall down here on this conveyor. Hopefully we got the right bit chosen. And we will do that with one of these guys and a normal output. And that output is going to be tied to here. We're going to call that a large gate. And 
And we're going to call this large bottle in place. Maybe we'll call it. Just make sure I have enough room. LG in place, large in place, right above that diverter valve. Um, it's probably more appropriate wording to use for that, but that's what I got. And I'm going to go to my data table and I'm going to drag that B355 and I'm going to put it right there. So now the idea is anytime a one is in that location, that location being right here um, in the sequence, anytime a one is there from that sensor, that means that that should be a large bottle and this should open up and it should drop down. So let's see if this is going to run that easily, just turning that motor on and adding those two instructions right here. We're going to give it a shot. Oh yeah, I got the scans turned way down. Oh, short one just went down. And we're missing, yeah, we're behind by one. You see how we, we had three large ones? Like watch this one, it's gonna be off by one. Took the bottle right after it. So I need to go, which way do I need to go? Well, let's just give it a shot and guess. Um, it's taking the one after it. I need to go forward one more. Let's try six. Now it took my name away because I changed the address. Download, run, and start. Now let's start. Oh, I'm way off now. Some, yeah, it just had to run out some of the, oh, maybe not, maybe it's still wrong. Oh yeah, I went the wrong direction. That's not good. So if I went the wrong direction and I went to six, I need to go to four, right? Now I'm so confident it's gonna work. I'm going to change this back to um, large, let's call it over diverter. I download it. Got a good feeling about this one run it. Now we're getting the right ones. So you saw initially we were off by one in our picking of the right bit that correlated to the bottle that would be over that spot at that time. And then I went the wrong direction. So I was off by two then, and then I had to go back the other way. But now we are getting every single large bottle. And we can speed it up here. If you look up here, there is no larges getting getting passed, and down here are all, all larges. So we are good. And then if you want to get fancy, you can make this conveyor only run at certain times instead of all the time. That's not required, but that's our large bottle motor, and we could put um let's see how we're gonna do this. that guy and we'll put something there and we're going to run it anytime there's something right above it and we're also going to run it a little bit before or after um, six. And then I had that old name in there, so I'm going to edit that. So now anytime there's a large bottle at four, oh, that's not what I wanted. That's right. At four or five, it'll increment this by one bottle. So let's see if that'll work right. course there's tons of uh, large bottles coming now so you can't see it ever actually stop there it goes there it stopped once so that gets them a little closer and you could have it that it only runs um, when there is a bottle right above it and then in theory they would all be right next to each other I was doing that um, 
a little bit earlier and I was having some issues, some complications with it. So let's try that here. Can't remember exactly what the problem was. Let's try it and see how it goes. There it goes. So we had an explosion already. I knew I knew there was an issue. It seems like you would only have to increment it every time it's opened up, right? But it, for whatever reason, it doesn't like that. And uh, I had to make this one off for it to work. Of course, I'll probably go the wrong direction again. We'll try it this way. That looks a little better. So oh, man, this will be a good test. All these up here. Turn up the speed here. There we go, we got it. So you can do it with just one bit actuating that motor. Um, it just can't be the same bit location that's opening the diverter, which doesn't isn't intuitive to me. I would think that every time you open the, the diverter, you would want to move it one bottle ahead. But when you actually make it that way, it crashes. You have to have it one bit off. I guess you want the thing to I remember which direction these bits go. I guess they go that way. I guess you would want it to move a little bit before the bottle came down. So that's that. That's basically everything that you need to do. Um, this to be accomplished by usually appropriate bit in a large bit array. Um, also, please ensure that bottles are not damaged in the process. That's what they're talking about when they drop down here and there's one in the way. Uh, but now we got them all solidly blocked up there. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to move on to arguably the hardest one, the hardest exercise in this uh, whole bottle line simulator, which is exercise three. That'll be my next video.